with my voice, so you heard it. Yeah, that's true. When a man has a point, he's he's got a point. I I can't argue with your logic, Steve. Is that true? It's true. Is that true? That's true too. Is that true? That's also true. Is that true? No, that one was wasn't true. That was a lie. Is that true? All right, this first ad. No, you 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 say your name. Oh, hey everyone, my name's Ryan. Is that true? That is true. My name is Steve, and this is Sixty Cycle Home, the guitar buying selling. Freaking crap. His name's Steve, and he's here to say he loves gar- guitar podcasting in a serious way. <laughs> oh, the guitar buying, selling, fixing, modding, breaking, trading, reviewing, playing podcast. Imagine if I could deliver a joke without stumbling over my words. Imagine if I could deliver the intro to this song without, or the, of this <laughs> show without stumbling over Should my we words. start over? No. <laughs> I don't want to. This first ad. It's not going to get better. Was sent by a uh, cast member of the channel, <laughs> Philip Carter. <laughs> it's for a more Paul. Sam, San Francisco Bay pickup only, please. There are rare birds. And then there are rare, rare, rare birds. Like uncooked birds. Yeah, this is one of the latter. Yes, it is a Les Paul. Yes, is it, it is an acoustic. This is the impossibly rare and inarguably odd Les Paul jumbo. I'll let you do the internet sleuthing about the basic specs and highlight things specific to this example. It has a stable headstock Wait, repair. Does he think we're going to do homework on this? <laughs> An added K&K pickup with strap button jack. It was refretted by Schoenberg Guitars probably 15 years ago. It includes a uh, beat, excuse me, but a functional original case. This thing has been played a ton and you can feel that vibe when you play it. I've seen these sell for as much as $11,000. This one is far more reasonable player condition and can be in the hands of a player like you for just $3,200. Do you think Les Paul signed off on this? Oh, I 100% think Les Paul signed off I think so too because it's got that funk to it. It's got that weirdness to it that only Les Paul would sign off on. So the story behind this guitar, because uh, Philip sent this to me, Wait, the you voice. had prior knowledge of this? I had prior knowledge of it. I did not know it from the title, but as soon as I... Uh, you didn't know that I had selected I it. I didn't know you had selected it. Okay. But I, but I, and I think, I know Philip sent this to me. He also posted it on his Discord where I talked about it with some of the folks on Discord. Mm-hmm. This is weeks ago. So. Phil Carter from uh, 40 Watt Podcast, yeah. by the way. Go subscribe to his channel. Yeah. He does interviews and stuff. Go make sure you're still subscribed to his channel. <laughs> yeah, go do that. <laughs> um. So I looked into this, and you are you familiar with the Je- the John Lennon Gibson? I think J is it a J forty five? Yes, intimately, Steve. It's I'm all not, I ever think about. I'm not sure what model it is, but you know the John Lennon yeah, yeah, model, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So that was originally supposed to be the Les Paul model. They showed it to Les Paul. They're like, "Look, we put a pickup in it, and we put a couple knobs. This could be yours, Les." And he was like. Who do you think I am? John freaking Lennon? And then they gave it to John Lennon. Like, that's the... And the rest is history. Do you think I'm some kind of boring guitar player like John Lennon? What are you you guys talking about? When I think about John Lennon's playing versus Les Paul's playing, I mean, John Lennon is a pretty good, boring guitar player. Like, compared to... That's fair. Compared to Les freaking Paul? But but basically, they, they had pitched an electric acoustic guitar to les paul before right 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 the one that from what i understand would become the uh the john Len- what's now known as the john lennon but where did model. this come from this comes from les paul he was like that guitar is not crazy enough give me give me a minute right right and they came up with this give me a wet napkin and a and a ink filled quill <laughs> i'll design a real les paul this this uh this guitar is basically one of the reasons why you know people who are are a certain type of purist will point out that les paul designed the log right and the gibson les paul was designed by ted mccarty right i think was it ted Mc, i believe it was ted mccarty yeah Something, uh, someone with a name like that because les paul would make this type of design right. choice les paul was a weirdo yeah and Genuine that's what made weirdo. him wonderful like he's like singing songs about tigers with his wife and stuff like that. And like 
quadruple tracking guitars at different speeds to get octave effects. Like Les Paul was not a boring guy and he didn't come up with boring ideas. I think I read no matter how bad Orville Gibson wanted him well, to. Well, let me see what I can find. I'm just going to mangle history tonight. Why not? Uh, Les Paul Jumbo. I think there were something like, I want to say 75 of these made. It's some very That sounds like number. a lot. <laughs> Does that sound like a lot to it you? It sounds like a lot of these. Let's see what it says. The Jumbo is a wonderful yet underrated guitar. I just Googled this. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Did it blah. originally have a, a pickup like that? Because this said it had a pickup added, but I didn't know if it was a swap. It's the under the under saddle is added. That's the K and K. Oh, so this neck pickup because that is like the the Les yes. Paul style pickup that he would have in his like recording Les Paul. Okay, so this information supposedly comes from El, uh, from uh, the elderly site. Mm-hmm. The J one sixty E that is the model that was originally supposed to be the Les Paul model, but eventually would become uh, the Beatles. Uh, guitar the john lennon uh this is the les paul jumbo this is on lespaulform.com it says that gibson record gibson records state that 43 were sold in 1971 three were sold in 1972 and three were shipped with no record of sale in 1973 for a total of 49 guitars i have seen uh other sites that that put that number a little higher but nothing like i mean those are triple digit nature those are low numbers yeah what do they want for this thing third this is now a uh, three grand on gear talk classifieds i, I hate i hate this i'm not a i'm not a i'm not a gibson boy mm-hmm. i'm not a, a collector of gibson stuff mostly because i'm not in the right tax bracket but also because i'm just not interested in them they're they're, they're not my style thing sure but if I was a Gibson collector mm-hmm. and I knew this was out there for three grand, right? I'd be selling stuff to make it happen. Like this is such an oddball, ugly duckling of a guitar, such limited numbers, direct mm-hmm. connection to Les Paul himself. Yeah. This thing, I know it's not in great shape. But it's not in poor enough shape that it should only be three grand, right? One of them sold as is uh, in uh, a long ago, two months ago on Reverb. It, it said it needed a neck set and some repairs. Does play, but needs some work on Reverb. It sold for $2,500. So That's wild to me. This this seller says those are that, like that's you know like those two Epiphones. Yeah, they've said that they now this one is has like a ton of checking. It looks like it's hard to tell, but it does look like it could have a pretty high action because that's why it needs a neck reset. Sure, sure. So who knows? I mean, this is the kind of guitar you drop off at Pitbull and say, Sean, just let me know when you're done. Uh, here, here's one, a blank check for your work. No, but like, I feel like at three grand. Mm-hmm. If you spend another three grand restoring it, I feel like that should still be a good deal on this. I don't understand. I don't understand Gibson math if these things are only worth three grand. Like I don't. I don't. I don't understand Gibson collectability if these are only worth that. Like it doesn't make any sense to me now. Here is one that sold eight years ago for sixteen hundred dollars. Sixteen hundred. I think the Gibson, like the vintage Gibson acoustic market is really limited to like J 45s, J one sixties, like this very narrow you know range what, of models. You know what it is? It's the, beca- is because acoustic guitars look at this and like a Les Paul, I don't want to pay, play electric. So they just stay far away from it. Are we it. doing that bit still? We're back. We're back. What we're doing we're doing <sighs> what we did last week. See, I wonder that, how that turned out. I wonder that, how angry people got. That's rough because you know like the listeners they got a week off of like hearing you talk about acoustic guitars and how boring now we're back. they are. Now we're back. And like, I only got like 30 minutes of a break <laughs> from your stupid bullshit about acoustic guitars. Oh my I'm God. So, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not sorry to the audience. I'm sorry to you, Steve. I know. I've put you through I appreciate a lot. your apology. Yeah. Will you forgive uh, me? Ah, uh, well, I'll think about it. All right. All right. <laughs> I'll forgive you when you reimburse me for the tacos. <laughs> 
Oh, I have I have other money to send you too. I forgot to do that today. Yes. Payday. Woo! If I don't send you money like midday tomorrow, remind me. Hey, yeah, where's, where's my money? I'm not in a hurry. I don't. I know, but I don't want to forget. Is the thing. All right. Uh, so this is three grand. You think this? You would? You think? This I don't is... understand how that's not a steal. These things just every single one that I saw on Reverb is under four thousand dollars over the last however long they've been listing. I think there is a there is something to be said for if something isn't Les Paul. No, I get the it. Man himself, I get it. Said, "Hey, I hate that guitar. Give it to John Lennon. Here's the guitar I want." And they only made forty something of them. And these things are going for under three grand. But here's the I thing. I don't get it. Does it suck? Here's like, the thing. Does it suck? Like, even if it sucks, I feel like it should go for more than that. You can buy a vintage. I don't know what's wrong with them. I'm not going to open them. I'm, you can buy a 1972 Gibson Les Paul. Uh, rec- looks like a re- the recording model for $2,600. Really? The highest one I'm seeing is like 5500 for something that's like the Les Paul custom recording, but they're all over between like 25 and four. How many of those did they make? They did make more of them. But my point is that like a 1971, let's just look up 1971 Les Paul. 10 grand for a 1971 Les Paul deluxe, right? Nine grand for a a 1971, 1958 reissue. But that that well, was a production model guitar. There was more than fifty of those made. Right. That's my point. My point though is like, and it's ten grand. Here's somebody trying to sell a 1974 Les Paul custom for ten grand. These are production or rel- like relatively high number production guitars. I think this is may fall into the into kind of a dual category of being so rare that it's actually too rare. And then two, that's raw. Uh, it it needs it needs the Jack White treatment. Someone needs to come along. The Les Paul, re, let's remember, right? The Les Paul is discontinued in 1960. There is no 19 the 1961 Les Paul is an SG. Right. The 1962 Les Paul is an SG. Gibson, depending on the accounts that you read or hear, basically gave up on the single cut Les Paul model until. Eric Clapton and, you know, Jimmy Page and these dudes were like, oh, yeah, this guitar's rad. Right. And now all of a sudden they come back. So people don't revere the Les Paul because it's the Les Paul. People revere the Les Paul because Jimmy Page. of it's the sound of British rock. Right. In the 1960s, the British blues revival. Meanwhile, I'm sitting over here like, oh, man, I love Les Paul, the musician. Yeah. Why yeah. isn't this this guitar that has his name on it valuable? It's no, because, I, I, it's because people who left, love Les Pauls don't actually love Les Paul. Right. I think that's 100% why. That's so weird. So, like, if you bought one of these and then you put it on your Dinosaur Ghost album and it goes triple platinum, then the value of these guitars will go up. Well, that's super unlikely, but, like... Which part? The you buying one part or Dinosaur Ghost having a triple platinum album part? All of that. But or the you playing an acoustic was, guitar on a surf rock yeah, album? This is all really unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, if you got it in the hands of... I hate to say it, but if you got it in the hands of a John Mayo... Show, John Mayo? Mm-hmm. If you got it in the hands of a Joe Bonamassa, all of a sudden now it's desirable, you know? So you're going to say Joe Bonamassa's name right, but you're going to butcher John Mayer. What did I say? You said John Mayo. <laughs> it's fun to say. Yeah, so is Joe. Look at me Look me in the eyes and tell me that it's not fun to say John Mayo. Is John Mayo more fun to say than Joe Boner Massive? No. <laughs> Yeah, you, ha- you have a point. You have a point. I'm just saying, like, if you're going to make fun of one, make fun of them both. Yeah, totally. Oh, or, or just be respectful of other musicians and don't make fun of either of them, Ryan. I hope they start a band together, and I hope they both play these guitars. Du- d- dueling Jays? Oh, du- yeah. that's I already... Ooh. Guys, you can have that for free. Uh, just send me copies of your album signed so I can sell it on eBay. Du- du- Double J. Dueling Jays. There's something Dueling there. Dueling Jays. I think it's Dueling Jays. Uh, 
the flying J's and then you can get in a trademark war with the truck stop. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. But it could be truck it could be truck stop themed because yeah, they're on the be, road together. You could be sponsored by Flying J Truck Stop. Flying J Auto Center? I don't whatever. Joe Boner Massive and John Mayo on the road <laughs> doing the truck stop tour. Flying JJs. All all your shows are at truck truck stops. The double J's. Double J's. You can you can have a commemorative cup. And they could get Jack. It could be like G three where they get a bunch of people on the J three. Yeah, but they but they get uh they get everyone with a J in their name. They get Jack White in there. But he's only like one tour. No, Jack J four Jack White Jack Black. Mm, John a Mayer, comedy element. Joe Bonamassa. Yeah. No Kyle Gass because he no doesn't have a J. No J in there. Jimmy Page is still alive. You can get Jimmy Page yeah. in there. J five. Yeah. Uh, you, you get, get John five. You get John five. Now you got a J six. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. In, the insurrection tour. Hey, if they want, if they want, uh, if they want a YouTuber in there, and they only want to hire one of them, but they still want it to be J four, mm-hmm. Jalen or J. You got two Js in there. Two Js. Yeah. Double J. You Double go from J. J2 to J4, but you've only added one guy to the yeah, bill. People are going to be like, why, why are there only three people here? I thought this was a J4 tour. And, they were, and then they realized the joke. Oh, J. Leonard J. He's does got J, two J's. Does J. Leonard J. get paid twice since he's two J's? I hope so. Or do they save money because they get to go to J4, but they only have to pay for one person? These are important questions. These are important questions, yeah. Uh, but I do. I, I think that's exactly what it is. Is like there's no association with this guitar beyond Les Paul and even this guitar. Like when I think <laughs> Steve just brought us back on when topic. I think that of, was amazing. When I think of Les Paul, I don't think of acoustic guitar. Neither do I. So there's, there's that problem too. That is a problem. Should I that's get, it. that's all the issues. Should I get one of his, his recording guitars? That's, I think it would be fun, but I don't know if they're good, but it would be fun. They're good enough that he made them their, his whole deal, his whole life. No, no, only in the seventies because it didn't exist before. But he kept playing it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Beyond in the eighties yeah, yeah. and nineties and, and until yeah. his death, really. Yeah. yeah. Didn't he? As far as I know, yeah. Every time I saw him as an old man in a photograph or a video, mm-hmm. he he was mm-hmm. playing one of those funky things. Maybe you should get one. They're only going to go up in value, right? It's basically an investment. It's retirement. How much? Are, how much are the cheapest ones? Like twenty five hundred. Uh, I think the cheapest one I saw was yeah twenty five. I don't, I don't know. Have, I don't know if there's anything wrong with it. I don't have any money. I don't have money to do. That. I can't convince myself to do that. I know you're counting stuff I could sell, but the the moment that that stuff, <laughs> is, the moment that those guitars turn into liquid cash, that's just a mortgage payment. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna turn that into another guitar. Here's what we'll do. Unless like Imperial Vintage, like the local. Chapter mm-hmm. of Imperial Vintage had one in, and I went and tried it, and was like, "Yeah, yeah, I can have some fun with this." And then they would take a bunch of trades towards it. If that if that scenario happened, then then I could see it happening. If I did a bunch of trades towards it, here's a really dumb idea. Uh, lay it on me. I love dumb ideas. Dumbest idea. Here we are. I mean, <laughs> does it get dumber than this? Live stream. Okay. Live stream marathon. The live stream does not end until you raise whatever amount of money that you need to buy a Gibson Les Paul recording off of reverb. You're just going to keep live streaming. It could be, you could have somebody pop on, you know, uh, Elon Musk. He sends you $4,000 super chat. He is a viewer. Everyone and, knows that. And you're done. You're you've, you've live streamed for five minutes. You got, or the money. you, or could, or you I, could live stream for seven days. I die on camera. You die on camera. And it, it's like, it never happens. I never get enough money. I raise yeah. like $175 and then sassy cat says, I can't give, I can't give you any more money, Ryan. I've I've given you thirty five dollars this session. Jason Welch has, has sent fifty. He has pranked you. Yeah, for the last like, time. C- Copel kept requesting songs, and it, I just couldn't get around to playing them. You know, like there's only there's only so many super chats you can collect, and then you know you know YouTube takes a significant cut of those super chats. I'd have to do like a GoFundMe or something like that. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, it's not going to happen, Steve. It would be better just to buy it with money that I have that I. Mm-hmm. Don't feel, I don't, here's the thing, like buying stuff like that, where it's like just a curiosity. 
It would, would be it would be nice to play would, it first. It would be a lot of money for something that's just curiosity when there's so many guitars that I know I would love, and I could buy like three of them with that amount of money. Yeah. Have you been to the local Imperial Vintage? I haven't yet. I, I know, keep, I keep meaning to, to get over there. I've been talking to. So you met her at Nam. I've been talking off and on with the. Is it the daughter of the owner of Guitars West in Muriel? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, about like what she's doing. I guess he, she used he, to work for for uh, Sur Guitars. Yeah, but uh, I still haven't been to that shop because their hours are like the same as my work hours. Oh yeah, so it's it's hard Just for me to just take get a over day there. off I work, know. Steve. My job's not important. Yeah, what do you need to do? Yeah. Feed your family? I know, I Come know. on, get real. Go see some guitars, Steve. I know. Just need to do it. Yeah, she was a fun person to me because we had no. just we had just covered like one of her dad's they ads. Had that split Ibanez. Yeah, it was Ibanez that connects split, with like yeah the split body Ibanez. Yeah. yeah, that was fun. Uh, I felt bad because she did message us and I didn't respond to it for a long time, and then you responded. I felt bad. I was like, I felt bad. One of us needs to do this. But it's like one of those things. I'll take the bullet. Where every time I looked at it, it's like I'm not in the mood to start a conversation right now. It's, <sighs> I'm so tired. It in the early days of the show, I would answer every comment, every message, and I, I can't do it anymore. There's, you have worn this man out. I'm trying to live my life, you know. I've got kids. I want to have, you know, I have off time. I'm trying to live my life. That's fair. I do my work, and then I, I try to clock out. So you need that. Uh, you need that. Uh, what is it called? Light phone or whatever that Josh. Uh, has. I don't need that, need but still, like I, I do try to like enjoy my off hours. Yeah. So I'll say that. Not that chatting people is not enjoyable. It's just not, sometimes I want to relax. And sure. Stuff. No, I get it. Yeah. I. Uh, you know what I mean, I. I have this whole thing with like I don't. Responding to messages is like built into my my broken ass headspace. Sure. Because like I have like badge phobia. Like I don't mm. like I don't like unread messages. I have uh currently have 125 unread emails and that's a little stressful. I don't even have a thing that Oh, you have 125 unread? I you, I'm sure you have a lot more. Oh, wait, it's I now it told me I have 82,000. Yeah. Yeah, I don't but now it's checking, so it's not telling me. <laughs> because you actually have more. I could not handle that. I would have to like disconnect those. At, some a, of those at a certain at a certain eighty nine nine hundred and eighty four unread messages. I don't even. And only half of those are from the ex president. I don't even under. Oh yeah, I don't. Those don't show up in my badges. <laughs> <laughs> but like all my accounts are like that. It's like I can't keep up with it all. Yeah. Uh. So last Paul recording. I mean, maybe it's worth it to like go check check out Imperial Vintage. Make, if I make if, a connection with them and then say like, "Hey, if you ever get one of these in, please yeah. please give me a call." I d I have been meaning I'll to come down. I'll film your shop and myself checking out the guitar. It would be it would be a cool cross promo. Yeah, yeah. I've I've had that thought of like going over there and, inter and introducing myself and be like, "Hey, if you ever get anything wild." Hi, I'm Ryan, your local YouTube dick bag. <laughs> Your local spoiled entitled influencer, yeah. and I'm here to mine you for clicks. Please consider my generous offer. <laughs> I I actually I I really wonder. This is so, we're so all over the map. There's got to be some, but I'm sure there's like people. There's like probably some food. Well, Sam the cooking guy, obviously. Right. What I was gonna say is there's got to be like I wonder who the biggest YouTuber in San Diego is. But then, is, do you count Sam the Cooking Guy as a YouTuber? Yeah. Since he had like oh yeah, a, totally. Since he had a TV show first. Nobody's full YouTube now. Yeah, yeah. He's he saw he he's saw easily the, the biggest San Diego YouTuber. I would I would think. Definitely in the food space. If there's someone who's bigger, it's like maybe their personality isn't being in San Diego, or they're just not on our map because they're right, like some sort right. of technology some or kind fashion, of, some kind person of travel or, person. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure there's someone who is technically bigger, but Sam the Cooking Guy is like a known quantity. Yeah, yeah. I met him. Nice guy. Yeah. For the, you know, 15 minutes that I talked with him. So that proves it. He's a good guy. You know, uh, Sam, the cooking guy, he's got a really nice kitchen. And the way that he keeps his kitchen nice is, I think, I mean, I don't know if he does it himself, 
or if he hires somebody to do the housekeeping. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, that wasn't your best. No. Because I wasn't surprised. It wasn't. Uh, you didn't surprise me that time. <laughs> uh, housekeeping. If you want to help support this show, you can head on over to patreon.com slash 60 cycle humcast. That money only goes to Ryan and I and to the people, uh, to the you know production of this program. Yeah. Because it there's, pays, it there's pays not, the costs. There is not a cast like a play. There is just a podcast. Right. And and by extension, the YouTube channel is also part of the podcast umbrella. Yes. As is Instagram, TikTok. We are all broadcasting. Of broad, the, yeah, broadcast. We have a broad range of things that we cast we cast a wide net we We cast cast a wide net around uh but if you want to help support the show for as little as a dollar or as much as whatever you feel like yeah uh you can do that there we really appreciate everyone who does it and at the end of every show or whenever ryan does special like patreon sponsored uh demos and stuff we run the scroll with everybody's name on it you know um and we and we run the scroll so it's all big pretty big print like it's big. You use a big typeface, yeah. Because oh, yeah. a, a lot of channels, when they get to the kind of numbers that we run, uh, they they make it real small. And then yeah. they do like they flash your name on, and then it's gone. And then they do you know they got to go through like four screens of this. We, but we provide a, just like just like a movie does. We just provide like a, a does. premium name recognition, yeah, experience here at sixty cycle on. Also like. I should start throwing the Patreon list up on all the giveaway videos that we're doing. We're like, we're ramping up the giveaway stuff. You should. There's a, I don't know if you can tell, like you can only see what's behind us. There's a lot of stuff in this garage. Yeah. I get a lot of pedals in. I can't keep it all. And we're starting to balance like, Hey, maybe it's better to give them away than sell all of them. Like some of them I'm definitely going to sell, but there's a lot of stuff that comes through here that I should just be given away. And we figured out a way that giveaways work for all of us. Patreons pay the shipping costs and we're shipping the Europe guys. Yep. It's not us only when we do contests because we're not a retailer. We don't have contracts, international contracts, uh, protecting retailers outside of our area. We can ship stuff to the Netherlands to New Zealand. Well, when I say we, I say Steve. I Steve will the, do the work to fill out the I paperwork, think, which is think, something that uh, I won't do. I think the furthest I've shipped something uh, is Norway. Might be the furthest. Um, no, you know what? I think I, I feel like I shipped something to Turkey once. No, I know exactly what it is. I've shipped to Israel. You That's got to be the Israel. furthest. It's got to be the furthest. That's got to be the furthest. Yeah. Got to be. Got to be. Got to be. Uh, we're doing, you're doing the affordable board giveaways, but we're going to, we're going to throw in some special things here and there. I mean, stay tuned. I think we're going to get wild with this. Yeah. I like, I like it. I like get like now that we have a system in place. I like, I like this. Yeah. I was going to, I was trying to find a pedal that I know we're going to give away eventually on there. You know what the hardest uh, part? But I don't see it in here. So you know what the hardest part about giveaways is guys. Steve, do you know what the hardest part is? Uh, picking the name. Picking the winner. You feel bad about it because every you didn't pick everyone else. Yeah. But we're, yeah. we're using this King Sumo thing that I've been doing on the affordable board giveaways. Mm-hmm. And it picks the winner for us. No guilt. No matter how many times someone begs us and, and I emails still feel us their gui- soft I still story. feel guilty when I'm doing the packaging, let's be honest. No, but like no one can guilt us into giving it to them with their sob story, no matter how many sob mm-hmm. stories they send. Mm-hmm. I feel bad for you people that have sob stories, but a pedal ain't going to fix your woes. It's just a fun thing to have. That's fair. So, but like just the fact that this website that we're using picks the winners for us. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it makes it so much easier. Very cool. So anyways, huge thanks to Patreons who make the shipping for that stuff possible. They also keep the lights on around here and they pay for all sorts of other stuff. They put food in our bellies when we have podcasting nights and pay for travel yeah. and things like that. It really, you know, it's, it's the Patreon fund is the lifeblood of what we do around here. It really is. So yeah. huge thanks to all the Patreons. Uh, also, big thanks to Artist Works. They're sponsoring oh, yeah. this episode. Artist Works is a uh, music lesson site. They do all kinds of instruments. Uh, guitar, obviously, is kind of what we're most interested in, but also drums, bass, piano, banjo, banjo, fiddle, harmonica, mandolin, dobro, percussion, scratching. They got DJ teachers in there. And the way Artist Works works is instead of 
the uh, way an artist works functions. Yeah, instead of paying for uh, lessons where like in the True Fire, which they're uh, associated with True Fire, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but instead of where you're kind of in this very large landscape, you actually sign up to take like a month to subscribe to like a month from a specific course with yeah. a specific uh, teacher. Like we're getting to try out the the lessons from Paul Gilbert. Yeah. And yeah. it it feels like very intimate with Paul Gilbert. Yeah. And uh, like he, you can send him videos of yourself playing. And I don't know if everyone gets a reply, but it's, he's done like 14,000 replies. Yeah. Where I, like someone sends him a video of them playing for a minute. And then he does a whole video showing them other stuff. Yeah. That they could do like, Oh, that's really neat. Let's, let's talk about the rest of that song or let, let me show you this or like, let me show you like, like it's wild. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's what I was going through just his reply videos and watching those because it was, it was so wild and fun to watch him responding to people. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, at the baseline level, the $30 a month level, you don't get that function. Mm. But for thirty three bucks, if you sign up for basically for three months, well, you can see of, his replies, but he, he you can't you can't send, send it. You can't right. send him a video. But if yeah. you sign up at the for three months at a hundred bucks, so only only three dollars more a month, you get access to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's also mm-hmm. a cheaper like you can subscribe for a year at a time. Yeah, you also uh, get to see what kind of hotels cool. Paul Gilbert, Gilbert hangs out in because <laughs> a lot of his videos seem to be filmed in hotel rooms. Yeah, so check out the affiliate link down in the description. And use code 60Cycle30 uh, for a discount yep. when you sign up. It also lets them know that your click came from us. Ryan, yes, Steve. this next ad is not a fake snake. It's a real snake. It's sent by Dave Santander. All right. That's bronze, the sound of a snake. Bronze BC Rich Custom Axe Real Snake Skin 24 frets. This is $484.33. Why, why is it some stupid number like that? Is it just they did a percentage decrease? It's probably because it's from Canada or something. It's like from that. Auburn, Washington. Yeah, they probably did a percentage decrease then. Hello. Hi. Up for consideration is this unique, one-of-a-kind, as-is, BC Rich Project guitar. This is a previously owned guitar in good use condition with normal marks and wear from use over time. Taken apart to do the real snakeskin top and faux snakeskin on the back and sides, noticeable mark slash scratch on neck plate, fingerboard tapers in slightly at the higher frets on the low east side. Bunch of information that basically you don't care about. Oh, it does have new frets. That's cool. It has whole new frets? Yeah, it, well, it has new frets installed, but then because of it, because of that, the fingerboard has chip out. Uh, it's got the pick of destiny trust rod cover. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, so it glows in the dark. Uh, Wilkinson Bridge. Like I said, whatever. Right now, I have too many guitars, so this one is for sale uh, for parts or repair as is. Shipped with neck separated from body in same box. Safe for travel. It doesn't sound like it actually is like it's not playable. It is playable. They're just selling it because they don't. They don't want to finish know, it. Caveat. Well, no, it's like caveat and tour. Like you buy it. Okay. It's yours now. Right, right. So unless it's not as described in the photos, uh, it is yours now. It's wild that they have real snakeskin on there. And I, I'm i assuming that it was spray painted or colored or something like that because I've never seen a snake exactly that color before. But that's wild to me. And I know that... I mean, I, I'm not someone who, like, wears, like, alligator boots or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Like, like my wife's not into, like, fancy purses or whatever. So maybe I don't understand this technology. Every time I've seen a snake skin that's not on a snake, it looks so delicate. And it looks like it's just going to flake apart. Like, I imagine how robust this actually is. Like I said, I don't, you know, I don't have, you know, alligator boots or whatever. So maybe I don't understand the way reptile skin works when used, well, I don't, used as like a leather. I don't think this is like snake skin that you find. You think a, a snake was skinned? Yeah. Right, Isn't right. That what snake skin is? But even, but even then, it seems like it would be so incredibly delicate to me. Like snakes don't have thick skins. They're not like a, like an alligator, I imagine, has a really thick skin. Right. right. Like you think of like, t- like traditional cow leather is thick. Every snake that I've ever known personally seems like it has a really 
thin skin, like tissue paper thin. Ryan, here's the questions I have. One, this is, like I said, $484. Is this interesting to you at $484? That's the first question I have. I mean, I'm not going to order it off a of reverb or anything like that. Well, that is where it is. I know, but if this was in if this was in a, a pawn shop, I'd pick it up and spend some time with it. Like I, you know, I've 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 been on, I've had my eye out for an affordable warlock for a long time because mm-hmm. I have in my head like when I run into the right one at the right price, then I'm going to convert it into a surf machine. Right, right. I mean, this isn't that one. It's been Converted into a snake machine, mm-hmm. I suppose. Uh, maybe there's a better pun because that wasn't a pun at all. Guys, get punny in the comments. Let us let us know how punny you can get. Um, snake puns, please. I no, I wouldn't order this for me, but I, I think it is compelling. Like I want to know. I want to know what it feels like. I want to know how it'll age. Like, you know, the, the, the artificial snake skin on the back, I understand that because that's some sort of vinyl. You know, yeah. that's like a Naga hide or something like right, that. Right. Like, I can wrap my head around that. I, I'm having trouble wrapping my head around what the real snake skin would feel like, how that would wear. Like, would it start to dry out and flake off? Does it have any clear coat over it? Like, I have so many questions. It's have some kind of clear coat over it, right? I want to know if it, it was, doesn't look like it's been played. It was painted, right? But it also looks like the pattern's so random. But like, no snake is actually that color, that size. This snake skin had to come off of a huge snake. Yeah, this came I, off I of mean, like a great know. big yeah. like boa constrictor or something like that. Right. So, okay, Ryan, you know, anatomical considerations of snakes aside, what band are you in if you are owning this guitar? Well, not white snake because this is green and brown mm. and yellow. I was going to say, if you chose white snake, I was going to say, I don't know, man. This yeah. is not a white snake. No. Maybe it started out as a white snake. What were you? Maybe poison. This would work with poison. Poison. I think if you are in a G.I. Joe themed band, uh, uh, Cobra? this could work. Cobra. Yeah. Uh, or if a, or a Karate Kid themed band. Mm, Cobra, Cobra Kai. Kai. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, thinking you could uh, you could uh, if you dressed up as James Earl Jones as he as the character he played in Conan the Barbarian. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a good cut. There, That's a good there you cut. go. I was going to say you need this guitar in your Sir Mix-A-Lot cover band because mm. my Anaconda don't want none. Or if you have a John Voight themed what band was he in the movie Anaconda? He was in the movie Anaconda. Or if you're going to happen to play in J Lo's band, and then was she also in? The, she I'm, was in the movie Anaconda. Or if you, you just are you going to just keep naming the entire Ice cast Cube. of Anaconda? If your name is Owen Wilson and you happen to be the actor Owen Wilson, and you're starting a band. You could select this as your guitar because you were also in... Uh, why do I remember so many actors from Anaconda? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen that movie. Really? Yeah. Uh, late 90s classic. Uh, what other... There's got to be you gotta like, real See, if you got to watch Anaconda, it's a terrible popcorn movie. Where, no, like They go yeah. up in the Amazon and J-Lo fights a big snake and John Voight gets eaten by the snake and then the snake spits him out and John Voight is like still kind of alive and he blinks and then he falls over dead because he was still alive inside of the, st- of the stomach of the snake and the acid was burning his skin off. Interesting. It's a, it's a fun movie. There's the big snakes come out and fight each other and mm-hmm. they attack people and pull them up into the trees and wrap around them and stuff. It's great. There's a boat. I'm trying to think of they like, ride, they ride a boat up the Amazon. I'm trying to think what other bands uh you could work around. Hey, with. say you're Angelina Jolie. You don't know what to get your dad for Christmas. <laughs> get him this guitar. <laughs> He'll love it. He was in that movie. All right. All right. I think I think that's the end of that. There you go. Um Right. Yeah, Steve. You well, good? do you think the price is fair? I mean, it's been wrapped. Yeah, the price is the price is it's been okay. wrapped in the, the flesh of a living animal. I think the price is fine. Yeah. All right. You got anything new? No. Oh, I've I've been in Florida. 
last oh, week. Oh, yeah. How's back. Florida? Tell me about I don't know because I haven't gone yet, but I, I, I'm assuming I had a great time because I was hanging out with Jay Leonard Jay. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I can't even talk about the details yet because I don't know how much, you know, like when that's all going to publish. It's not going to be on this channel. It's not going to be on his channel. It's going to be a whole other thing. Yeah, but we were in Clearwater, Florida. Where is Cl- Tampa? Excuse me. Tampa. Yeah. That was pretty close to the mic. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. Steve, Steve, I had the, I had that, I had that burrito a week ago, and it's still hitting me. You've been having all the food sounds oh, the past two episodes. Jeez, it's rough. It was better when you were cardboard, Steve. <laughs> I had. Do you ever want to take cardboard, Steve, home with you? No, I don't have anywhere to put it. Oh, okay, all right. Maybe when my garage gets cleaned up. All right. Well, you could tack it to your wall in your office or whatever. Uh, uh, if you want to stay here, it makes sense for, 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 yeah. for it to be here, too. So whatever. Uh, back in episode 521, yeah, which actually was a while ago, but back uh-huh. in episode 521, I talked about like a month ago. and I ordered oh. uh, on air. I sent a message on air about a base that was local to where I live on Facebook uh-huh. Marketplace. And then the next day I bought it. <gasps> Uh, it's a short scale Kingston base. I'll have to send you some photos so you can put it in this all video right, all right. right here. Hopefully. Here it is. The photos remember. are up right now. Yeah, hopefully. Editing Ryan. Editing Ryan. Hey, wake up. Wake up. Put the photo of Steve's base right here. Ho- hopefully, hopefully he heard. Uh, but it's a pretty fun base. It's uh, I actually, so it's funny as I was. Uh, uh, it's a funny base. Um, I guess uh, last last Sunday, as a, for the recording day, not the release day, I went on one of Bully the Kids live streams, and uh-huh. so they actually saw the base. The people in that live stream saw that base before anyone else did. Wow. So sorry, folks. What did they have to say about it? Uh, they were like, "Oh wow, that's a really cool vintage base." It's like I said, it's it know. looks like a Kingston, but Kingston's one of these like Tysco, Conqueror, right, right. whatever kind of brands, yeah. you know. All coming out of, I think, the Matsumoku factory or, or you know, one of those. And uh, it's kind of like a knockoff j base sort of thing. It has flats on it. Uh, the guy I bought them from had flats on it. Uh, it's got a sponge underneath the the bridge. Mm-hmm. Uh, not under the Not under the bridge, but, like, it's got, like, a tray, like a bridge cover. So it's okay. in between the strings and the cover. And it's got a sponge in there. Yeah, to like dead in like a mute. Yeah, yeah. To give you that, uh, give that like a Motown sound. The bridge pickup doesn't work, so I do need to take it apart mm. and figure that out at some point. Um, but the neck pickup, you know, with the with the the mute and the flat wounds and everything does sound very Motowny. Nice. And I, it's short scale too. Uh, like How does I, it play? I, think I mentioned it plays okay all right all right uh, that's I, better than i was expecting i've tried to tweak the truss a little i've lowered the saddles basically as low as i can and i think it's playable up to maybe the ninth fret okay like you can go higher than that but you definitely are like doing like smooth r&b up high there's no playing fast right uh, you need it, it requires way too much power to. Do you think like shimming the neck would help? I'm I'm kind of wondering, but I don't know if I'm gonna I have, uh, mess with that too much. Kind of strings, flat wounds. It's got flats. Yeah. All right. yeah. I just put flats on my uh, on my. Uh, yeah, I was horn. playing it earlier. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. I love flats. So, uh, so I'll keep that as is. I'll keep the flats on there because it's such a weird, goofy bass. And if I want something uh, more traditional, I've got the Squire Jazz Bass or the PV T20. Mm-hmm. Cause that's a super traditional base too. Uh, or the Italia, which is also not at all traditional and probably also would benefit from flats. But, uh, but Let's yeah, it's honest. really every, cool. Every base would be better with flats. I paid 140 bucks for it, which is nuts. I'm pretty sure I could like put that thing on reverb and probably at least make a hundred bucks on it right mm. away if I needed to, but I don't need to. I will say I felt a little bad buying it. The person I bought it from, uh, was probably my guess is like early twenties, and did not really seem like he wanted to sell it. Uh oh. But I don't. Why, what do you mean? He was. was he, he just kind of had this under uh, duress. Uh, kind of made it seem like the story I made in my head is that he was like maybe in community college and his mom was making him sell it to like so he could pay for books or something. All right. It was just, 
I basically said, here's some She's money. just trying to like crush his dreams. Of I, being don't a I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't interact with folks in their early 20s a lot. You just got a vibe. But I just had a vibe like mm. either, you know, that or he just didn't know how to talk to adults. I don't know. I just got a vibe. It was a little weird. A little weird. All right. But 140 if bucks, man. If so. you're out there, tell us the story. Comment in the video and be like, oh, yeah, I totally was forced by my evil stepmother to sell my one and only base because she hates my dream of being a Motown bassist. I mean, the action on this thing was like so horrifically bad. You did him a favor. That I, that I am, I kind of like, it felt like maybe it wasn't really. Being Hopefully played. he took that money and he used it to buy a real bass, right? Yeah. Or yeah, I have no idea. Or an acoustic guitar. Ryan. Yes, Steve. Uh, how often do you pursue joy? Mm, I don't know, but th- we're not doing that this episode. We're not? Oh, you thought I was going that way. Oh. I, what I was really asking is how often, how frequently do you chase bliss? <laughs> That was Steve. Your transitions this episode are rough. Yeah, yeah. You're off your game. Hey, it can't all be magic. Uh, you know, even the greatest pitchers give up a home run now and then. All right, all right. Ch- yes, I, I, I just whatever you said. Yes, I chase my bliss sometimes, Steve. And when I do, it's with chaseless pedals. Chaseless.com. Get on the mailing list. <laughs> you want to know about their new stuff? Just trust me. You want to get on that list. <laughs> Chaseplus.com. This is the most awkward sponsorship we've ever done in our entire life. Ryan. (laughs) Guys, Chase Bliss, you know that you want a Chase Bliss pedal. You've been putting it off forever. Put it off a little bit more if you want to, but you know one day you're going to do it, right? Just do it. You're just going to do it. And we're going to be here waiting for you. Hey, editing Ryan, put Shia LaBeouf right here. Just do it. Just do it. Oh, Buy a Chase Bliss pedal. I don't know if he can hear your voice. He only so far he's only heard my commands. <laughs> Editing Ryan. Yeah. When you post this, I'm gonna download it and I'm gonna re-edit it and right. then re-up. I'm not gonna do that. No, That's no, it's gonna crazy. do that much work. Yeah. It's gonna me? it's gonna take me. It's gonna here's here's why I won't do it legitimately. I will. I could download it off of YouTube. So easy. Thirty minutes probably. Yeah, no, probably less. I got pretty fast internet. Yeah. I could make that edit. In like under 10 minutes. Yeah. And then it would take me four hours to re-render the video. And that's why I won't do it. <laughs> you need to get yourself a new computer, oh, dude. Oh, man. My computer's only like two years old. It's just not you built for... You need a computer for, that's built for video built editing. Built for video, video editing yeah, yeah. at all. What are we doing now? Are we doing another ad? Yeah. No, we're doing the topic. Oh, yeah. The topic. I'm all, I'm all lost and turned around here. I did a screen grab of it. Don't worry. I'm going to find it here. Any moment. This was asked by Matthew Ridgeway. Ridgeway. It doesn't have an E in it, so I'm not sure it's Ridgeway. It's Ridgeway. Uh, like, how many strats do you actually need? I have four, and I know I should probably pare down that to two. SSSS and SSH. But here I am being a little dirt goblin. A little dirt. Dirt Goblin. Also me furiously checking to make sure Dirt Goblin doesn't mean something awful since I thought I'd just make it up. I think I'm in the clear. I don't know. Dirt Goblin sounds great. I feel like Dirt Goblin should be a character here on this show. Oh, the Dirt Goblin's here. Here to gobble up all our dirt pedals. Oh, no. The, my guitar has gone clean. The Dirt Goblin is who, fi- who, who, uh, who visits you when you don't wash your hands before you play guitar and then you don't wipe down your fretboard afterwards. Get a visit from the dirt right, right. goblin. The dirt goblin is the thing living in your guitar when you've got low output pickups and you just can't get enough grit. Mm, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, anyways, how many strats do you actually need? Well, let's start with the most basic strat that you definitely need: the Tom DeLong strat. One pickup, one knob. That's one strat. That's that one need. strat. There's one, one strat. strat. I'm gonna hear. Getting serious though. That gonna, was serious. Okay. I'm going to, Steve is just going to list every strap that's ever existed. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I think every electric guitarist, not every guitarist, I know you acoustic guitarists out there are fickle and you don't always want to play. They could get it an acoustic strap. I think every guitar, every electric guitarist at some point should give a standard three single pickup. Oh yeah. Stratocaster yeah. a shot to see if you're a strat person just to see. If, if, if you've got that magic connection, some people have this magic connection to various guitars that are just like, mm -hmm. oh man, a Telecaster just, I just connect with it or a Les Paul. It's just my thing. Some people are Strat people and it just makes sense to them. And it, it's just the perfect guitar. And for everyone else, the Strat body shape is the most ergonomically correct body shape there is for a guitar out there and i don't care if steve has a counterpoint because he's wrong it's just the most ergonomic i, I don't well balanced guitar shape there is i don't have a counterpoint my only complaint with the strat ergonomics and it's not it's not an ergonomic body issue it's an ergonomic ergonomic design flaw the stupid switch man but here's the thing all those things are changeable. I'm just talking they about are, the body no, shape. No, I know, I know. And I'm including all of the variations, all the super strats, all the Ibanezes, everything that takes that S shape. Mm -hmm. That is the pinnacle of ergonomic design for electric guitar. Mm. So if you care about comfort, you care about a guitar that... I think Strandberg would like to have a word. All right, whatever. Uh, Parker... <laughs> Ken Parker would like those are strats way. too though. Parkers are strats. Do you think they have that strats? basic that that basic body form of a horn that goes out further than the bottom horn and has a waist All that right. connects to your body and cutaways for your okay. for your arm and your belly and stuff All like that. Right. This this mm -hmm. concept of a strat body is the most ergonomic shape. So I would not put it past anyone who doesn't love a Single, single, single coil strap loadout to be mm -hmm. like, I still want a strap body shape loaded with whatever else you want. P90s, humbuckers, Dynasonics, go crazy, Dan Electro lipsticks, mini buckers, you know, like it, Telecaster e pickups, EMGs, Telecaster pickups, Jazzmaster pickups, whatever you want to put in there, Acoustic Sonic, whatever. P bass pickups, like Jazz bass pickups. Honestly, you could have 30 guitars in your collection and they could all be strats and each one could be loaded out wildly different from the last. If you love that body shape and it connects to your body and you feel at home playing a strat shaped mm -hmm. guitar, why not? Why Bart do I have as many as you want? Bartolini bass soap bars. Why not? Music man humbucker for some bass kind of, pickup. Some kind of futuristic optical pickup. Throw it in there. Who cares? Hot rail pickup. I mean, Triple rail pickup. Quad rail pickup. Penta rail pickups. Does that exist? No, probably. It well, probably does. Somebody make that. Somebody's find Just a penta more rail. rails. Yeah, Put more rails in there. You know, I've seen. I, I I've seen guitars <clears throat> with it, but I think they've just been like two quad rails next to each other. I want someone to just make a octa rail pickup. Mm. And the in order to fit it in your guitar, it either has to be a swimming pool route with a custom pit guard, or you have to route it all yourself. I remember that guitar show that we went together? Yes. To like 20 years ago or something like that. Yeah, it's a long time ago. Something I still remember from that show is that there was this booth where the, a guy had a bunch of project strats, a lot of like uh, part strats. Mm-hmm. They only had the neck pickup. How do you remember this? That's amazing. I just remember it for, because it was so like, oh, that's like the opposite of where I'm living right now. Right. Because I was right. very much like, oh, give me just a hot bridge pickup and I'm good. And I didn't understand it at the time. But now I understand the magic of a neck pickup mm. on a Strat. And it's like, oh, yeah, I totally get it. Like some people just live full time on the neck pickup on a Strat because it sounds amazing. I'm glad you get it, Ryan. I get it now. Like, a very traditional Strat is a very unique and specialized niche, niche, niche sort of guitar. <laughs> and not everyone connects with it. Mm -hmm. If you connect with it, I'd say for like a traditional Strat loadout, I'd say max three. 
if you've got more than three, you're going to have to start justifying it to me. But if you were like, oh yeah, this is the first one I had, so I keep it. Oh, and here's like a modern one that I got that's got like noiseless singles sure. in it or something like that. Sure. Oh, and here's one that is just like a dead on recreation of like original Strat. It only has the three way switch and mm-hmm. no noise canceling and like stuff like that. Or nitro finish and it's relic or whatever. Like, like, I would get that. Like, I have more Jazz Masters than I need. Like, I understand that sort of thing. How many Jazz Masters? I thought you I just have two. two. I have two Jazz Masters, but then I also have a Jaguar, and then I also have the Harley Benton parts thing. Mm. And then, yeah, like, I have a lot of things that are Jazz Master adjacent. Right. Uh, but the point is, like, more than three, I feel like now you have to start justifying things. But you could own three standard strats, and I feel like you don't have to explain yourself to anyone. Yeah. But then, like any other loadout, sky's the limit. It like if that's your body shape, that's your body shape. I still, I mean, I I guess I haven't played really played one in a long time. Uh, but at least like in the back of my head, I know for a long time, like the HSS Strat was kind of like the do it all. Like people, oh, if you yeah. if you need to cover a lot of genres, you need an HSS. Strat. If I was gonna recommend a first guitar, a first electric guitar to anyone, it would be a Fat Strat mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, I don't. I just don't feel like personally I get along with them. Really? I don't know, man. I don't, I'm not a bridge pickup guy, so the humbucker is maybe a little wasted on me. But it could also be because I've only played like 90s fat strats where Fender just was putting garbage humbuckers and stuff. Do you know what strat I have outside the door right now? Um, No, I don't. I have Chelsea strat. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. I'm gonna At some point, I'm going to fix it up for them. What's yeah. wrong with it? Uh, I think some sort of bad switch or something like that. Like they just, that they, uh, they're uh, our friend, Adam and Chelsea, uh, their son is starting to play music. Yeah. And so they yeah. asked me if I could, uh, you know, clean it up for him. A it's a, uh, what, like an 82, 80, it's a Dan Smith era. Fender. Should I grab it? Yeah, go grab it. All right. You, you, ta- you talk about it. Strats. I don't really remember everything about it, but, uh, I, I think it's a, either an elite or an ultra. I think they called them the elite series stratocasters 1980s early 80s dan smith era strat it's plays freaking nuts it's got is that the free flight trim or is that the series two i don't remember i think that might be the series two look at that color in this light it looks real good it's like this this aged silver yeah i i i want to say this is the series two uh elite stratocaster I think that, that they, it's got the front side E3. Yeah, it that's says, it says Elite E3. right there. Oh, it does say Elite. Yeah, in script. But it's got the little push buttons. Yep. Which probably are the, the issue. If that's the issue, that could, hopefully it's not something that's worn out. Hopefully it's something that's an easy. Yeah. It's got those, the per, know, it's, maybe, a, it's a performer era. Yeah. You yeah. know? Like this, the same style uh, pickup covers and the funny knobs and the funny bridge and stuff oh, like that. That that pot's got some, a little bit of. Oh, these pots are all a bit slow. Oh, I'm sure. I wonder if they're all if they were made that way. Hopefully, or, it will just take a little deoxit to get yeah, this thing yeah. working again. I'm I'm looking forward to doing a video, taking it apart and looking at the guts and uh, yeah, playing it. What's I'm, this? What's this nonsense? I know. We'll get <sighs> freaking. Adam over there, indie folking it up with this stuff, you know. Yeah, he's really, he really indie folked it up. <laughs> uh, trim your strings, guys. You know, you don't, poke you don't, someone's eye out. You don't even need to have a, a a wire trimmer to to trim those. You can do the the trick where you just like. Yeah, I never really liked doing that. But. Look how easy that is. That was the that was the heaviest string on there, and I just pulled it off with you know a little bit of twisting right now. <laughs> Let's twist again, like we did last yeah. summer. There's no reason to leave your strings untrimmed. Yeah, guys. you should do some work on that. Film it. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah, make a video. Move some units for Fender. It won't well, any, no, because they don't sell that I anymore. Know, I know. Yeah, but that. So that's the other thing is I th- I feel like when you get into strats, there is there are there's some like lore around them where there are the weird models like that. There's also, uh, you know, there's a lot of lore and a lot of, uh, just stories about how g- good the quality is for Japanese 
fenders in the 1980s. I have so so there are things that you could dive into just from like a collector perspective that aren't necessarily uh you know your functional like every strat in every pickup configuration sort of sure, a deal. Sure, sure. If you love it, you love it. Get yeah, get, get yeah. as many as as you can responsibly collect, you know. How many strats do you think are in this room right now? Without looking um without i'm cheating oh, you can look you can look you can look, you can look. The but there room, are some the there are some I that there are was only like two there's th- there's like some the, that besides, are besides well you brought this one out i know the green one's over there so are you counting the silver sky oh I yeah i'm counting the silver sky okay so i would say there's three are there and there's also the 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 timu strat over uh, there okay yeah. so that's four mm-hmm. and then also there is my baritone strat which is in a case behind the wall here wow I didn't um know that so, and of course the Timu strat plays just as good as any Fender, no. but that's what all the other guys who built Timu guitars said. Are you saying they're lying to us? I feel like there's another, str- <laughs> I feel, I feel like there's another strat in the room, but I, I can't think of what I feel the presence of another strat. There's more than six strats in the room. Well, I've got my Mexican strat upstairs in the office. That's not in the room. I know, but it's in the house. Which one is that? The gold one? Yeah, the margarita wrap, green whatever, one. Margarita, yeah, the, yeah. The, the nail polish one. Yeah. My my original like 90s Mexican yeah, yeah, strap that yeah. I've been kicking around forever. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six strats in the house, and I'm not even really a, a strat guy, and I have six of them. Man, I only own one strat. <laughs> this is it hell of a strat about though. me? It's a hell of a strat. That's true. That MIJ got, is got a magic. One. That's a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one. All right. Uh, let's do the last ad and get out of here. Yeah, this last ad was sent by, I don't know, because I'm writing a timestamp down. James Boyce. Boyce. Good job, Ryan. You can read. Bo- twin neck guitar. Homemade twin neck guitar. Bass and guitar independent, so it can be plugged into a bass amp and a guitar amp. Neck pickup on guitar active. Center and bridge disconnected inside. Both play well with good action. <laughs> so he doesn't mean that it's active as is powered by a pickup he means that it functions <laughs> yeah this is in <laughs> wath upon dearn uh which is somewhere in the uk i think uh this is 60 pounds which you know it is a twin neck guitar so you would expect it to be a bit heavier is that wath what? upon dearn yeah oh this is a st- a strut and pain I've heard about these, unfortunately. <laughs> you wish you hadn't heard of them. Oh, and an on where is I've that seen sh- this somewhere else. Is that a short scale guitar? It looks um, tiny compared to the bass, and I know basses are bigger than regular guitars, but it's still, it still do- it, it does looks look, a lot smaller. It does look than like normal. a three quarter body. Yeah, look at how big the bridge is on that body. Yeah, it's, a, it's a little guy. I don't think. Yeah, it's this is like a Squire Mini. I think. You know, I don't hate it. 60 pounds is the right price. And it's the right weight, too. Um, no, legitimately, because on... Well, do you remember... Well, I mean, you have fonder memories, I'm sure. Uh, the Encore... This is kind of a sad thing to do to an Encore in some ways. But also, if you're going to do this to a base, the Encore is probably the right brand. From what I recall... The lead two that you had was an encore. Oh, that's possible. I still have that. Where is it? It's, it's on, in a, it's it's in a in, case back it here. Parts? It, no, it's behind the, the wall oh, okay. over here. I think I I think I salvaged a couple parts off of it, like like strap buttons or something. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, you, you used to scavenge uh, pickup wire, not pickup wire, but like uh guitar electronics wire off of that guitar oh, i think i took i think i stole the output jack off of is it. that what it was yeah well i think no I, I needed an output jack and i was like well i'm not using this thing i remember at some point you like just needed like three inches of wire <laughs> that sounds so like you something took I would it do. off of like it was like a switch to output jack and you just took the wire right or it was like from the switch to the volume knob or i something. don't remember doing this but i totally believe you yeah I was like, Ryan, just go buy a spool of wire. This is when Radio Shack still existed. It's like, it's I like did ha- three bucks for a f- I 25 feet of wire. Oh, I already got it on this other guitar that I'm not you know using. What's crazy is I, I bought one of those triple spools of wire. Yeah, and you wire still have it. For, 
I'm no, sure. No, I don't. From, you don't? From Radio Shack, I ran out. How? I don't know. I did so many guitar projects over the years, I eventually ran out of that wire. That sounds impossible. I don't have it anymore. Oh, that's incredible. Imagine if you had filmed all of those projects. Because like the I, the I know, the, so the slammer that I had. Oh, yeah, that, that's true. That's I true. redid that thing probably a dozen times yeah. in different like pickup and switch and like setups and stuff like that. And I I I did a bunch of guitars like that where I just completely re- rewired guitars mm-hmm. for fun over the years and trying dumb things. Remember that I was trying to build that guitar that had four single coils in it and had oh four, yeah four heavy switches in it. I could never get it working right. Yeah. What would, what did I put that on? Uh, you put it into the Mexican Stratocaster. Did I? Yeah. You had like this pit guard, this whole jangled, cause you took up strap pit guard and you chopped it up. No, I made that pit guard out of wood. That was like, oh, that, you're right. When I made that, thing. I made that same, same pit guard for the, the lead two copy where there was this, this super thin hobby wood. Yeah. That it was so thin you could cut it with scissors. So I'd cut out pit guards and then I would put a layer of fiberglass on the back of it to make it strong. Mm-hmm. These these are the dumb things I would do before I, remember, I had a guitar show. I remember you putting that on uh that four pickup deal trying to do you're always trying to do it on the strat. I don't know if it ever made it actually onto the strat. I think I wired it up and I couldn't get it to work quite right. And so I just gave up on it. So I always just was kicking around that that pit guard. But it was it was a it was not done well. No, <laughs> it was, I used for a lot some of reason wire. you just could never get it to not have ground. You know what home. my biggest problem back then was? You didn't actually know what you were doing. Well, <laughs> that was part of it. But a big problem is that I didn't know that I had a really deeply underpowered soldering iron. Oh yeah, because yeah. I would just I was having to like scrape it on there like like cake frosting right because it wouldn't get hot enough yeah. to melt all the way and just god awful soldering jobs back then where i'd use so much solder just trying to get stuff to stick because i bought the cheapest soldering iron i, I could find because I, I was poor i know um i know there's still a lot of when people talk about uh oh what what uh soldering iron or what should i get you know for a beginner or whatever right and i still believe like unless you just think you're just really not sure that you're going to ever want to do it more than once just buy something you know because the thing is is when you, there's a lot of these like kind of generic or even like the weller which weller's a good brand yeah uh but it's like their their lowest powered one i see oh just get the pe- the weller pencil that's like 30 watts or whatever and they're like oh well will it do everything oh well it might be like dicey with pots depending on like what kind of solder you're using because lead free solder can be a problem. I think I actually still have leaded solder at home because uh, I bought a big spool of that. Listen, you don't need to get the whole big desktop style one that I have that's programmable or, or whatever. Which one are you going to recommend? Um, what I'm going to say is, like, you look at whatever this is the cheapest, and the then cheapest. like, and then look at the wattage on that, and just know that that's not enough. Oh, okay. Know that the cheapest one doesn't have enough wattage. So I'm looking like there's a bunch on here. Like a 60 watt that's 10 bucks. Now you know you don't want 60 watt. No, but that's the thing is that's so cheap. 60 watts is actually a lot. But look, here's a 90 watt for 35 bucks and it's a kit. Right. Get the 90 watt. This is like. I'm I'm saying like you really just need something that gets hot enough and the wattage is what kind of controls what gets hot enough. If you want to avoid my mistake, just get one that's hot enough. You don't need to go crazy fancy, but don't, don't buy the $10 one. You know, right. go go spend 40, 50 bucks. I spent at the time, I think it was 90 bucks for the Hako FX triple eight D. Is that what I have? I have the uh, blue and yellow it one. Is. It is. Okay. Because that's the one that like literally pedal builders when you recommended. Yeah, to when us. you would go yeah. on to because we were in some some pedal building groups with you know folks like Q you don't need to name and, drop with all the guys that we talk about all the time and everyone who's famous for dial. building pedals. We, um, we talked, but to them they all basically said private. like, this is the one you should get. Right. No, but, it's, it's a great one. Um, it's, it's done really good for me, but not everyone yeah. wants to jump in. Like, like I said, don't buy the $10 soldering iron, buy the $30 one, yeah. buy the $40, I do one, think buy the $50, 60 one. Watts is probably enough, but I wouldn't get that $10. I wouldn't risk it. It'd probably just melt. It'd probably have other issues. It probably gets to 60 Watts. 
It probably gets up to full temperature and then the handle melts in your hand or something. Who knows? Just invest a little bit. What a does it have bit. to do with this? We got so far off topic. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about this double neck guitar. All right, 60 bucks. Uh, there are, there's a lot of project pieces here. What do you think about the way that they combined this with just a sheet of metal? Oh, it's super shoddy and super just like throw it together, but I bet it's fine. I bet it works out just fine. And actually like the way these bodies connect is actually, not, I don't mean like the, 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 the hardware that's connecting it, right? but the way that the bodies line up so that this miniature strap body melds with a P base body. Yeah. I think works it, really that, well. That part's well done. Like if like the, the, the decision was correct. The execution is, you know, it, it is what you're paying for is 60 pounds over here or I, whatever it was. I do think because they use the mini strap body, it could be kind of awkward to play because the, the, like the high frets of the, of the guitar body are so well, far away. A lot of people play bass up here, Steve. I don't know if you know that. I do know that. So if this is one of those people, <laughs> I'm, I'm giving Steve a bass lesson over here. Uh, Tell me more about the bass, Ryan. <laughs> uh, so if they're one of those people, then the guitar is going to be kind of normal-ish down here. Yeah, I guess. I, but I, if they're if they're like a low strung uh, bass bass person, you know, like a I just feel like even like if a you're, punk bassist. I feel like even if your bass is up here, like the high notes on your guitar are all the way over here. And that's what I mean by like. I have a feeling away. that I, I kind of like this marriage of a bass guitar and a kind of outside of normal electric guitar. Mm -hmm. Like I want to see you, you, back in the old days, back like er, early days. double neck guitars, like old Moserites and things like that. You'd see guitar plus electric mandolin. Like you'd see guitar plus some sort of weird electric banjo. Right. Sort of, like they would get, they would do these weird like amalgamations of things. And then it was like, Oh, well don't you want a 12 string and a six string? Uh, I guess. And then that just became like the standard. I, mm -hmm. Sometimes you see like a baritone in a regular six string. I like the idea of taking a bass and like mutating a short scale guitar onto it. And it's all going to be very specific to the person who's going to be using it, the end user, because right. they know like, oh, most of the time I'm thudding up here on the bass. I'm imagining that this is a majority of a bass. Like that's why they built it. Most of the time they play most, bass. Mostly for, so okay. they're thudding on the bass. And then there's a there's one song where they need to be doing something strummy. Mm -hmm. And so they just lay down like a three or four chord part. And they don't need it to be full scale. A short scale is great. It's, the short scale actually brings a really, a really fun character to the strumming or maybe they throw a heavy compressor on there and they're doing all sorts of like poppy chicken picking stuff that works alongside with the bass or something. I don't, I think, I think it's a fun concept. The execution is rough. Maybe this was just the, the trial and they worked things out and then they built like a much, much like more professional version. So the one thing about this whole guitar bass thing that is really cracking me up that might be the one thing that would even at 60 pounds scare me away from this. There are no ferrules. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For these are both string through bodies, which is cool. String through P base is like particularly cool. Uh, but where are the ferrules? Well, you got to buy those yourself. So then if for 60 bucks, you need yeah, to throw you another 30 those. bucks into I this. I wonder if, you know, they were just really poor fitted, but it does look like on the guitar, at least you can see like, paint chip out where for whatever reason they decided to pull the ferrules out of the body i don't i don't understand that. i th i think the 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 holes on the base are factory i th those things can just fall out so they probably just fell out when they were changing strings this guitar has a strat oh yeah trim bridge on it when it definitely doesn't have the routing for that so they just bolted down a strat bridge, and then they drilled those holes, which is why they don't line up right. You think this was originally like some kind of top loader deal? I think it was a, a I think it was a hardtail, and they, uh, they either lost it or it wasn't working for some reason. And so they put they just bolted down a strat trim top, and they took the uh, the bottom plate off of it. Right. Right. Which is a wild modification to make. Where's the, where was the original bridge for this? Like that is a wild decision to make. 
Stretton pain. But they did it, and you know they're selling it for a price. It's like if someone has a use for this, they might take a gamble on it. And be like, ah, sixty pounds. What is it? You know, like I could eat eat out three times. I could get fish and chips three times, or I could get a double neck guitar. You know, I don't know how much fish and chips cost, but I'm you know basing that <laughs> on like kind of just like fast casual eating in the states. You know, what it, I want to know, like. How many hours do you need to work minimum wage in the UK to earn yourself some run of the mill fish and chips? Let us know in the comments. Let us know in the comments. Like <laughs> like the Mexic like standard Mexican food in San Diego, yeah. which is like the uh you know kind of adjacent same sort sort of cultural sort of thing like the place you go to get, you know, sure. fast cheap food that's maybe good for you, maybe not so good for you. Uh you probably need to work about 45 minutes before taxes. Well, it depends on where you work. Well, I'm saying minimum wage. Sure, sure. Minimum wage. But minimum wage is different in different places now in California. Oh, right. Because it's, it's like the fast food know, is higher. Let's just say, whatever. yeah, I think you're right. About Somewhere in between half an hour and 45 minutes worth of work. Is that where fish and chips land? Or is it I less? I want to know. Or is it more? Or is it more? You have to work for four hours like to there's, get one fish and chips. But chip. that's like, this is like a whole side tangent. One piece of fish that's, and one piece of chip. That's like our regional dish. And for whatever reason, when I think of other places' regional dishes, I think that it probably lands in a similar price point. Like Philadelphia cheesesteaks mm-hmm. probably land in that like half an hour, 45 minute wor- worth of sure, work for sure. minimum wage employees sort of thing. It's something accessible, something you can treat yourself to and be like, I earned this. I'm going to go eat like this drunk food. You know, this is great after being a, a, a night of drinking. Yeah. And then... Because there's a lot of things like that, like a sli- like a couple slices of pizza in New York, uh, you know, a Cubano sandwich in Miami or whatever, you know, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And then there's the fucking lobster roll. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't those things like thirty bucks a piece or something? I don't think they're that much, but I haven't priced one since. You no, know, they're like pre-COVID. I, I got a lobster roll one time here in San Diego. Yeah, because you got it in San Diego. But then I looked up the prices, like in Maine. I was like, no, that's what they charge no, for these I things. I don't understand how don't a regional that. food can also be like this. Like you might as well just buy a lobster. Just go get a lobster dinner instead of buying a lobster roll. Lobster roll price 2024. Let's see what Google gives me. Uh, I'm seeing someone on Yelp say I'm paying, if I'm paying $20 for lobster slider, that's not even a roll. I think that's just what they call it. This, this, this post says Woodhouse fish company has lobster rolls for only $15. And there's like explanation points. Like, oh my gosh. Like, I'm telling you, like most of the time lobster rolls are like 20, 30 bucks or something. I'm looking at a place called The Lobster Stop. Where is this located? A good lobster roll will now cost you $32 in New York City. In New York City? They don't New have... York City? Yeah, get a freaking rope. <laughs> <laughs> this is a long episode. I'm sorry, guys. Seafood's so fresh, you'll think you're at the waterfront. I'm going to 24-7 Eats Online so I can order from the Lobster Stop. They're closed, but I can pre-order for later. Oh, look at this. August 11th, 2022. Uh, someplace called the Clam Shack in Maine. Uh, it upped its price from lobster rolls from eighteen ninety five. dollars to 2495 in 2020 that was four years ago steve okay. what do you think they cost now i'm looking at the lobster stop right now a single lobster roll sorry this is in quincy massachusetts so it's not it, it might not be a lobster roll it might be a lobster roll sure all right you know lobster yeah. gotta get that lab a single lobster roll is 14 dollars. a excuse me double lobster roll is 25 dollars. does that come with i want to see the, i don't know i want to see pictures of these lobster rolls let me see if I can find a picture. I'm not denying that they're good. They're 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 an excellent thing to put in your mouth. But view more. It's gonna they, they got a whole page. It's gotta be like the oh, most wait, no, expensive, like local delicacy, you know, like local fare. Like even if like like you think of like the like a 
a crawfish boil in the sure. south or whatever. Sure. Yeah, it that probably is expensive to throw that, but it's also like a party you throw for like thirty people. How, what's the price? What is the price of a Nashville hot chicken meal? Do you think that's cheaper? Oh yeah. What about like? Kansas City barbecue plate. Well, barbecue is a totally different sort of thing because you're getting a rack of ribs. But if it ribs or whatever, but if you went and got a sandwich from a from a from a barbecue spot, it's going to cost like regular restaurant sit down stuff. But like I don't know that there's probably like roadside like costs and stuff like that. Like your your local place, you know, on the corner that just does like a barbecue pulled pork sandwich that you love. I don't know. It's just lobster rolls are decadent. For a local food. All right, let's let's finish. You have to pick an adventure club. This winner. website's loading so slow. How much are lobster rolls in your area? Yeah. And how much are fish and chips? Here, there's a that's a double lot. That's twenty five dollars. Two lobster rolls. Two for twenty five. But still, think about like I know that's a lot. It's not a cheap meal. Well, one is fourteen bucks. It's a paper plate cardboard sleeve meal. For twenty five, right? Bucks. And when and you it get comes a burrito, with, it's wrapped in paper. It comes with fries that look. They look like they're probably fine, but they. I get the sense that they might be a little sad, like a little bit stale. Like they look like they'd be good, but if they don't have a crunch, then they're going to be really sad. They look like uh, Five Guys fries. Like I said, really sad. Uh, <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Just because they give you a lot doesn't mean they're good. They got to make look, up for look it. Look at that double lobster roll. Doesn't that look delicious? If I could get lobster rolls here in San Diego, two for twenty five like that, then I then Lauren and I would do you know a date out, out of it. Here's a here's a single lobster roll that was horribly tiny compared to Jeez. other times. Look at how small that is. Well, I'm saying we maybe we don't understand the scale of these. No, that that one is especially small. Oh, is uh, you guys can't even see the pictures, and I don't no. care. I'm not going to do the work. Is a uh, super whatever that super sandwich shop still open? Yeah, on, I think so. On... How much do they charge? Because it will do, know, they'll I don't do re- something I don't like that. I don't remember what that place was called. I think you're right. It's like super supernatural. 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 Uh, I went there like once or twice. Supernatural. Sand. But not, you know, it's seafood. It's not cheap. Supernatural sandwiches, Miramar. Let's look at the menu. This is a, we're going to roll over sandwiches. an hour and a half on this episode just because we're talking food. Which one is, I don't know if they have a lobster is the thing, but they're, they're shrimp It'd sandwich. It'd probably be called like the Loganista yeah, wrap they're, or whatever. Their spicy garlic shrimp sandwich is $17. Shrimp is different though. Like no, shrimp is cheaper no, than lobster. If their shrimp sandwich is 17 what do you think their lobster is going to be? They might not have a lobster. I don't. I don't see a lobster on here. It's too no expensive. Lobster. Too, that's probably what it is. And actually, All right. You know what? Crab's better than lobster. Suck it. They don't have crab either. I didn't see it. I know, that. but I'm saying, like, if you're going to spend money sure. on a sea bug, right? king crab. That's where shrimp's I like to live. Shrimps is bugs. Shrimps is bugs. So who won? Uh, we did the Jumbo Les Paul. Yeah. The real snake. And the real snake. Did we do the snake this one? Yeah, we yeah. Did. The snake was this one. We the episode so long, I forgot. And then the double trouble. I, I'm I'm going with the double trouble. Really? Yeah. I'm on the jumbo, Les Paul. <sighs> Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Where'd my mind? Okay. Spin the wheel. Uh, oh Why come did on! You spin it like that. That was so weird. Because I'm a weirdo. <gasps> I won again. I'm on the streak now. You're on the streak now. What am I, like like four or three or something like that. Congrats. It feels significant. Uh, Philip Carter. Maybe we need to give it like test turns before we go. Maybe that's the problem. It just yeah. keeps doing the same amount of rotations. Uh, thank. Uh, congrats, Philip Carter. Sorry we got you a bunch of subs who YouTube took away from you. Uh, hopefully <laughs> this like two 20, weeks ago. $25 gift card to the digital storefront of your choice or two affordable board pedals will make up for the negative 700 subscribers that you got. Sorry. <laughs> Let's play the song, Steve. Uh, this song was sent by uh, Frank. He says, gentlemen, you asked for more music. Chief Rhythm Killer, specialist in all styles between Miami and Rio de Janeiro, once met... George Jorgensen, co-inventor of the Swedish surf guitar at a guitar festival, 
somewhere between Mannheim and Weilberg, and they had to record clean guitars and dub echoes afterwards. The song is called Anaconda. Have fun. By the way, September 2021, ICE train from Cologne to Frankfurt. Who was sitting on the left side of the train? Is this a riddle? Have you ever been to Cologne? No. What because is going on right now? When was the last time you went to Germany? Uh, it was like 2021. Was it September? Are, I'm just wondering if maybe they're saying. No, because that, that event's always in. Uh, it might have been but September. Don't you, do you fly into Frankfurt? You usually fly into Nuremberg. Okay, that's what I wasn't. But there's usually it's like a we take we do take a train. He said that he was across from me in the train. Is that what's going I on? I don't know. It just said by the way, twentieth of September, twenty twenty one, I C E train from Cologne to Frankfurt. Who is sitting on the left side of the train? There, there's no answer. So I, but I'm wondering if that's around the time you might have done a Toman event. It or, might have, or the Gear Street not Toman when it's Gear Street. I we take a train. It might have been, who was I with? It might have been me or Trey Xavier. It could have been, oh, who else was with us? I can't remember now. A couple, uh, like three or four people, but I know Trey Xavier was with us. I think Lynn was there for the train one time. Mm. You tell us in the comment section. Tell me who was there. Did you spot me? Were you there?
We deserved that. That was fun. It was super, super fun. Thank you for that. Why did we deserve that? Because we deserved it. See, we earned it. It's a, it a great song to end on. I love that. Like the should could that should that be the new working on a guitar time lapse music? Well, I should feel like I you alternate? Should ask permission if you want. Well, to do yeah, that. obviously, obviously. Also, if it's copyrighted, then it might suck monetization out of my videos. But that would be a really fun video to maybe you know like you know, alternate against like Stanley Sharkey, mm. the, uh, you know, it looks like pancake song. Right. Right. People who have no idea what I'm talking about right now are so confused. And I don't know how they made it so far in this episode, <laughs> but people who, you know, are, you know, connected to the deep lore of this channel are like, Oh yeah, yeah. That would be a good video. <laughs> that would be a good song. It doesn't have that sliding bass, but also smell this guitar. It's got that smell. You know what I mean? That's interesting. I've smelled that smell so many times. That is the smell of like a guitar show at your county fair. It's like a vintage case aging poly kind of smell. All right. Bye, everybody. Stay, Stay grounded. grounded.